Good evening, everyone. Good evening. To uh, welcome you here tonight. It's great to uh, see such a great turnout from our community. Uh, my name is Ian Grind. I'm the uh, superintendent of Edison County Public Schools. And uh, very, very excited to be here tonight to share information with you. Also important, I think, to gather feedback and answer questions as best we can. Uh, we understand uh, that as we go through this process, something new, it involves change, and when we have those things, we want to make sure that we are as transparent and open and forthright as possible. So, before we begin tonight, I, I did want to recognize a few um, people. I, I know this is a cross-section of our community, uh, but I did want to ask any parents or students Give a round of applause, please. Thank you for being here tonight. I'd also like to recognize any staff that are from Nash County Public School. Thank you for being here tonight. Also, I'd like to recognize that they can please stand at Nash County Board of Education. Thank you. 
any other elected officials that are joining us tonight. school. 
school, and we want to capitalize upon that and make sure our students are safe. We think that's critically important. The other thing I'd like to share tonight that I think maybe is one of the most important things we have to talk about tonight and moving forward is our discussion and partnership about how we can enhance educational opportunities for the children who are making this transition. We all know that the deadline for the plan to be submitted to the State Board of Education is November, November 15th. And that's a really important date. But I also think on November 15th and before, the really most important part of work starts with what we're going to do to help support our students and help them transition and educational opportunities for them. And I think that's an important conversation for us as a community to have and to see what we're doing well, what we think is helping our students, we can continue that. And also have a conversation about what we can help them do better and what we're going to do to ensure that. That takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of people working together. And in my opinion, it takes an entire community to do that. And uh, that's why I'm so excited that there are so many people here tonight so we can begin having that conversation. Because after all, what we're going to do and, and the most important thing we do about this entire um, process is what we do for our children and our community. The other thing I'd like to share about, and maybe you already know this, um, I, I have been superintendent in Edison County Public Schools since September 1st. And I will tell you that, that I have uh, been humbled and grateful and so proud to be superintendent in that short amount of time. I can't tell you how many great people I've met and people who've been able to share their thoughts and ideas about how they want to make things better. They brag on all the great things that we've done. And some of you probably read recently, 11 of our 14 schools in Eskimo County Public Schools never exceeded growth. Also, our school district exited low performing status. I believe that speaks to the commitment of our community and educators to make things better for our students. And that has to continue. And we have to work together to make that happen. So, on that note, uh, before we begin tonight, I just wanted to sort of frame the conversation about what we're trying to do. Uh, we pulled the agenda up. Uh, we're going to have a brief overview of the merger history information, as many probably already know. But in case there's someone here who doesn't know that, uh, frequently asked questions about the merger. And also, the time for you to ask questions or write them down on a card so we can try to answer them as best we can. And uh, I, I just want to reiterate tonight that we are here to answer your questions, to share your thoughts, and we will take the necessary time to do that. It's critically important for us moving forward that we hear your voice and we hear your thoughts and your feedback. So, on that note, um, I would like to introduce the county manager of Eskimo County, Eric Evans, uh, who has been uh, very um, great to work with over the last few weeks. And he's going to take us through uh, sort of a background and history of this, uh, of this process. Thank you. said, my name is Eric Evans, proud to serve as the Edgecombe County Manager. I would like to recognize our chairman here, Mr. Leonard Wiggins. Um, I'm not sure if any other of our board members are here. Um, also, our deputy county manager, Ms. Natalie Best, is here as well. 
Um, I'm going to take just a little bit of time to talk about, you know, how is it, uh, recent history at least, how is it that we have come to this position where we are now to plan for this transition? I won't go back to the early 90s when it all changed from county and city school to consolidate, consolidate natural life now. Um, you know, maybe if you have questions later about that, we can attempt to answer it. But I will go back at least to uh, 2015. In 2015, we started having conversations between our board of commissioners, school boards, um, uh, about the arrangement, if you will, that, that we have been under since, since the 90s. Uh, we, we, had, we discussed some questions and some concerns about wanting to make sure that Hedgecombe County is providing its uh, a proportionate and fair share of the cost for our residents who were being ed educated in the Nash County school system. At that time, there was some conversation about uh, a deep merger, some people call it county line merger. And, and I will say at that time, our board, and I believe both school boards, uh, pushed back against that. We just felt like that, that transition would be too disruptive, wouldn't be in the best interest of our students. So we had many meetings here locally and at the state level with our representatives to try to work on stopping that. Well, that did stop, but what came out of that is what we refer to as Senate Bill 382. Um, Senate Bill 382 did a number of things. I won't go through the whole list, but some of the things that it did was, uh, it, it, first of all, the, the name of the National Rocky Mountain Schools changed, so it's now Nash County School Unit. Uh, the second thing that that state statute said that was that the city of Rocky Mount had to cease in providing some assistance in covering the cost of educating the students in Nash County Schools for our residents who live here on the Edgecombe side of Rocky Mount. We refer to that as the funding gap. As you would understand, uh, the tax base in Nash County is much greater than it is in Edgecombe County, therefore Nash County is able to provide a greater, higher per pupil allocation for what we call current expense, which is for operational costs, local supplement, that kind of thing. The city of Rocky Mount had been paying that difference. The difference between our allocation, Nash County's allocation, they were paying that difference. That difference would change from year to year depending on the, the base allocation that was provided and the number of students um, in the school system. It would range anywhere from $400,000 a year to $700,000 a year, thereabout. Senate Bill 382 said that the city of Rocky Mount could no longer do that. And so Edgecombe County had to take on that cost. And so uh, beginning a couple of years ago, we have been covering that, that differential. Um, it, it, one of the things that creates for us is that now we have, in the last few years, last couple of years, we have been uh, providing a greater per pupil allocation for those students in the Nash Rocky Mount schools, 15, 1600 or so students, than we have been the rest of the students in Edgecombe County schools. And as you would imagine, that puts us in a position we really don't want to be there. The other thing that it did was it said that, that the county can, we are required to pay our proportionate share of capital costs, that being what they call annual capital allocation of fixed HVAC units, roofs, things like that, as well as any debt service on school renovation, school construction. Um, we pay capital costs anyway, but the problem with that was that um, we would have to pay our proportionate shares based on the number of students from Edgecombe compared to the total number of students that usually range somewhere between 11 and 12 percent. We had to pay our share of that 11 or 12 percent regardless of where those capital costs landed. And it could be in a school where we would have few to no Edgecombe County residents in that school. So with those couple of things, our Board of Commissioners started having a conversation with Edgecombe School Board about uh, this is not a good place for us to be in. We don't feel like it's a tenable position to be in in the long term. So whereas originally we pushed back against merging, we then started having conversation about maybe we should consider doing this. 
So our board, our board of commissioners had a number of discussions about that, both their board individually and also collectively with Edgecombe uh, County School Board. Um, our board, at least the majority of our board members, was moving in a direction of making that happen. The way that we were going to trigger that was, Edgecombe, was that Senate Bill 382 said if we didn't pay our portion share, it would trigger us moving towards county line merger. So uh, our board direct me in preparing the budget to not provide the full amount to Nash County Schools to trigger that. In the meantime, another bill came out, Senate Bill 248, I believe it is, trying to keep these numbers straight. And Senate Bill 248 took care of that. It took it out of our hands. Now Senate Bill 248 says that this county line merger will happen. Regardless of the funding that our board provides or does not provide, it is a state statute that is going to happen now. Now I know maybe parents, teachers, community leaders may feel different ways about this. Some of you may say if you had the choice, you don't think that we should choose to do this. But I guess my recommendation would be it's going to happen because that state law now says it is to happen. And so therefore, we have sort of shifted our position, our mindset, and said, since it's going to happen, let's put our energy into uh, making the best out of this. Let's put our energy into working together to make this transition as smooth as possible, and as Dr. Brian so well said, to ultimately uh, take this as an opportunity to do the very best that we can, not just for those 14 or 1,600 or so students, but for all of our students, and, and I would say I think that's the same sentiment in the Nash County Board of Education. And so um, I am so pleased that from my viewpoint, and I've had the opportunity to sit on a committee with both county managers, the full board, chairpersons, um, superintendents, and other staff. We've been meeting uh, initially monthly. Here lately we've been meeting every couple of months. And I've been so pleased and so encouraged to see uh, just the partnership across those four boards in making the best out of this. And, and as Dr. Brian has said, there's a lot of work that has, has to go into this. this. This is a big thing. There are a lot of details to, to be considered and planned for and, and hashed out. And, and, and I want to say, you know, we play a part in that, but the bulk of the work has been between the two superintendents and their staff. They've done a tremendous job of preparing this plan that has to be submitted by November the 15th. And so uh, I'm grateful for that work that's, um, that's been done. Um, I, I do want to, I want to show in this slide to say that from our perspective, from Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners, our role, a county's role as it relates to schools is to fund it. We don't educate the kids, right? But we put, help put some money on the table to help educate those kids and provide buildings in, in which to educate those students. Um, and so our, our board has been committed to doing as much as we possibly can to provide for all of our students, including our students that have been a part of and currently are a part of uh, Nash County school system. Uh, you'll see here this, uh, uh, just a table showing uh, funding that we have provided uh, for those students to Nash County schools. Um, and this goes back to uh, FY19. And it certainly goes further back than that. But you can see that it's, we have been investing millions of dollars, both on the current expense side, again, that's the day-to-day -day operational funding, as well as on the capital side. And now that same commitment is going to follow those students into Edgecombe County schools. And so we will, our board has, uh, has uh, been and will remain committed to education. Uh, several years ago at one of their retreats, we sat down and, and I, I posed a very simple question. I said, we, out of our 70 to $75 million budget, we don't have, that's a lot of money, but we don't have money to do everything. If we can't do everything, what do we want to make sure that we do? And at the top of that list was education. And I will say since then, that's been five or six years ago, every year at budget time, we've been working very hard to continue making education a priority. So one of the things that we've done to show that continued prioritization uh, and importance of education 
is uh, this fiscal year we increased our current expense allocation to Edgecombe County Schools by a little over six hundred thousand dollars to help raise the local teacher supplement from seven percent to ten percent. Uh, I, I'm a former teacher. I taught social studies 30, almost 30 years ago. Um, and so it's been a long time since I've been in the classroom, but I will say that I knew then and I still know now. All you administrators are very important. Thank you, God bless you for what you do. But the most important ingredient for what happens to those kids is that, that classroom teacher. So we need to make sure that we give our school our school board as, as much as we can tools to recruit and retain uh, great teachers. Um, also, we are we have been and will continue to uh, explore funding opportunities to meet the facility needs. As you understand, not only taking on these four uh, additional school buildings and their current structures, um, looking at how we're going to house um, high school, uh, not just short term but long term. We're looking at options and. Um, and, and exploring some funding opportunities for that. Um, also, we, we're making investments uh, to help remove barriers to post-secondary education as well. You know, we get to be a partner with our community college as well. And I think I saw Dr. McLeod uh, come in. If you haven't, haven't met him, shake his hand as the best community college president in the whole state of North Carolina, I would say. Uh, and uh, so we're, uh, we've also been working with Dr. McLeod and his team to create some new initiatives to help remove some financial barriers for students. And, uh, and a priority is, is, is built into those new initiatives, um, uh, opportunity giving priority to uh, high school graduates from our school system. So um, education means the world to us. Uh, we don't have all the money in the world, but we're going to try to use what we have as strategically as we possibly can to continue to make education a priority. We're going to play our part um, in, in making this transition as smooth as possible. And uh, thank you for the opportunity for sharing with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
date is July 1st, 2024, when we will receive the students from Nash County Public Schools. Our next question is, what student grade levels will be in practice? And that is all rising pre-K through ninth grade students living in Edgecombe County will attend Edgecombe County Public Schools. So that's next year, if you're in pre-K, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, fourth, ninth grade, you will attend.
They know their purpose. They're community driven. They are civically and socially engaged. They are resilient in the face of challenges because they don't challenge. And they have the agency to make sure that they know that they can change their situation or the world around them just by a little bit of design. So if that makes you as excited as it makes me, um, tonight we will have an activity where you can stay in and you can talk to us about what it is you love about learning. To build your ideal school, as well as we're going to have a design team so we work with teachers, students, parents, community members to design signature learning experiences for students who come to the school when they're a part of Edgecombe County. So, what is it that is amazing that they can learn? You can't tell I'm super excited about it, so please scan this QR code also on your agenda and you can sign up for that and be a part of that team or stay tonight and um, do an activity. Take my child abroad to the Edgecombe County Public School of my choice. Well, to just as a correction, the ECPS schools of choice. We do have a couple schools of choice on where students can apply to. So not school of my choice, but you've got school of our choice. Thank you for that. Question. Yes, depending on their grade level, students can apply to several different options. First, to Martin Lennon Academy. Both school located in Tower, North Carolina. It's from Early College, and you know those two um, satellite uh, campuses are located one in Rocky Mountain, one in Tower, North Carolina. That encompasses grades 9 to 13, and is Academy of Health Sciences, grades 9 to 13.
strategic planning. This is my colleague, Dina Howell, over here. And so we are going to walk around with the lights. Um, these folks up here are glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we'll give you the mic, and you can ask a question, or if you've written a question on a card, and you'd like us to read it and ask that question, we're glad to do that, too. So we'll take some hands. Does anybody have a question for us?
early because uh, Antoine County's election is in March, which is before the redistricting, the annexation takes effect in July. It's kind of a complicated conversation. But what is of concern is that the legislature is only going to be in for the next couple of weeks. So if there is going to be a legislative fix to this situation and the community will have to get input, we would ask the Edgecombe County uh, School Board and administration to have a community meeting and we really need to have it next week where you discuss what your what options are for Edgecombe County residents to vote for the school board in Edgecombe County in 2024. Because it will take a, a legislative change to make that take effect. It's an urgent matter and I'm asking will you um, take that step to have an information session so we as citizens and our legislators uh, can know um, and share all the same information and know what the options are. And like we have for other matters, people weigh in with their opinions about what the best options are. If I may, I'm going to stay a little bit Change 
can be scary, but we know it's inevitable. Change is going to come. But as the teacher switches over to another county, and we want to make sure that we're financially stable because we're used to a certain income, and applying to a new school, we are match pay, increase in pay. What incentive do we have? Because I know it's a scary thing crossing over not knowing your financial income. So that's one of the things that I know I would like to know is the paper match, will it stay even? Responding to the gentleman, and I would like to go too, is that um, the young lady who is handling the transfer of the teachers and giving the information packet, if we are all North Carolina by state, this is a question, teachers, shouldn't it be just taken across the board? So today 
So A5, 7, 8, 30, 9, 1, 30, 9, 30, we'll be going to Eshcon. But what about those families that got a 10th grader that Nash is saying their grandfather went into the high schools over here, but yet you might have a sibling that's had to cross over to Edgecombe. So now you have a household that has a split county that some is in Nash and the other is in Edgecombe. But are y'all going to kind of think about keeping your days off and stuff, things like teacher work days and stuff, consistently with Nash County? Because if it's split, somebody may not have a child, you know, provided because the high school kid is on the Nash County side to where the little brother is on Edgecombe and nothing matches up and it puts the strain on the parent because they got two kids going to two different districts. I think you bring up a really important point. That's a discussion point. The administration, first of all, administration, and all the people been involved in this transition been talking a lot about that. Sort of the, uh, the nuts and bolts of this. And we understand that there's going to be times when there are special instances where the national administration, national administration are going to have to work really close together, case by case, to support students like that and families like that. We've had to come up. We think it's uh, critically important. We talk about aligning calendars. <coughs> to make sure that some of those things don't happen and, and, to, and to address some of the issues with maybe split families with that. that. Some of the work I was talking about that's going to have to happen after November 15 okay. that we're working on to try to address that. But you bring up a really important point and uh, we, need, we have to address that to go along so we can, we can support families. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a parent of a student, one that goes to basketball on the D.H. Thompson. And what's concerning to me is that I have one on high school that is a 10th grader. And that's the strong point that you brought up. Now you're telling me that my ninth grader has to go to the other schools on Edgecombe County. So now I got two kids going to two different high schools, two different schedules, and two different transportation. So now when games and stuff arrives, I got two games going on at the same time. So I hope y'all can address this in advance to let us know what's going to happen because um, I really thought I should be grandfather in, but maybe if I know in advance what's going to happen. I just don't want two things going on in the same household because it's, it's a lot of dramatic things happening like that. You know. I, I, understand. I understand where you are. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the points I was trying to make. Hold on, let me step away. That, that's really one of the things we need to make sure that we work with Nash County, that situations like that when they arise, we get together and make sure we find a, a good solution for everybody. And uh, I know it's very difficult with the scenario you put in there. Uh, I would love to get your information. Uh, and yeah, because Nash County told me that they was going to be able to address the grandfather's needs. And, and so I'd love to get your information before you leave tonight so that we can talk to Nash County. Thank you for bringing that up. And for being here. I know I might be asking a lot of questions. I was at that last week. I'm going to just say this is what was said on the Nash County staff of Local Grandfather. This is what was told to the family that they have big concerns. That what we just said is the split. Y'all was with me when they said this. They said if they want their child to stay on the Nash County side, it was going to cost them $1,600 per child in households. That didn't even cover the transportation. And if they paid to stay on that side, they will also have to transport their kids themselves. And that's a big concern that people have because what she just said, if I want my kids to stay on that Nash County side, both be in the same district, she may well have to pay for that younger child to stay on that Nash County side. And that would cost that parent $1,600 per year per child. That's what it's told. And that's a big concern with families because that can't afford that. Yeah. 
I just want to get a little clarity for the ninth graders. Um, you said we voted on option two. It still has to go before the school board. Um, was that including that the ninth graders have their own facility? Because that was addressed and brought to. I couldn't see with uh, the debris there that uh, if option two had them in their own school. Because now I'm hearing they can either go to North Edge Home or the Early College or one of the other facilities. Because at one time they had, in one of the meetings, that they had said that they were thinking of the school next to Fairview, the building next to Fairview to use as for the ninth graders. So at the ninth grade students, right now, the two options that we are presenting to our board um, for the course would be either the North Edgecombe High School or the Pinky Baker that's located in Rocky Mountain are the two choices. Now, I believe if you are asking about uh, the option two that we had that we showed on the board, that is for the current schools at Nash. They will remain in the same field pattern that they are now with this school. Um, Yes, Johnson, Fairview, Park, all of those schools remain in the same field pattern. What we did not have in the choices for you to look at before with the three schools that you voted on was the high school for the ninth graders. And so all along we've been talking about a space for the ninth graders. And so right now the two options that are on the table for the ninth graders are the incubator that's located in Rocky Mount and North Edgecombe. And the early college. And the early, early college right. is an option. And also Edge Academy of Health Sciences, which is also an early college. Okay. And so Edge Academy will also be accepting students in rising ninth graders and rising tenth graders. So that's an option for those students as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank So we will start recruiting for our early colleges for them late fall, early winter. And so the students that are currently in that that are currently in Nash County, those students will also have the opportunity to apply, just like the current students that are in the Edgecombe County. And 
early colleges are limited by space, of course, and there's an application process. But like I said, we do have two early colleges. One is new this year, and we are not anywhere near our capacity. So if you have a student that is interested in an early college, there's a strong possibility that they, they will get an opportunity to um, have that.
about that. Uh, we are working very hard to capitalize on uh, Kingsborough Industrial Park. We've got companies that are looking at us right now that can create anywhere from two to 4,000 jobs, and we hope that happens. But even outside of that, we got to help our folks get the jobs that we already have. Hmm. You can go on NC Works uh, website, and if you look up Edgecombe County Profile, it will show you we have around 1,500 jobs open right now. It will also tell you there are around 16, 1,700 Edgecombe County residents that are unemployed. So there's a disconnect that we've got to overcome. Education is key to that. And I want to take this opportunity to give a plug. I mentioned briefly earlier about strategic investments that we're trying to make, working with community college to close some of those funding gaps. Dr. Greg McLeod came to me to sit in my office a few months ago, and he told me, he said, Eric, you'll be surprised how many people, Edgecombe County residents, who come to the community college who want to you know, start some certificate program, a curriculum program, they may even get Pell Grant, but it might end with a few hundred dollar expense gap, books, transportation, maybe the cars broke down, whatever it is. But those few hundred dollars can either stop them from starting or they start and don't finish. And he said, we gotta do something about that. And I said, I totally agree. So uh, we went to our board and our board was happy to invest $75,000 to work with the community college to create what we're calling the Edgecombe Works Promise Program. And that's live and ready to go right now. It's brand new off the press. You can go to Edgecombe Community College's website and look up Edgecombe Works Promise Program. You can get either up to $500 for short-term short -term certificate program or up to $1,000 for a curriculum, uh, 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 semester long curriculum program. And that money will help not only pay for tuition books and fees, but the balance of that can be, will be given to the student, the scholarship recipient, to pay for other expenses, gas, daycare, whatever it might be. Because we've got to close those gaps to make that connection. It makes no sense. We've got the second highest employment, unemployment rate in the state. And yet we've got more jobs open than we've got people that are looking for a job. Second thing I'll say is, and I don't want to mention this again, talking about the pay difference. I know that's extremely important. Uh, we're all in, in a time now that none of us can afford to take any kind of pay cut. Would you agree? So I, we understand that that's, that's critical. And we understand that there will be an extreme challenge to our superintendent staff recruiting if we can't be more competitive particular on the on the local supplement. So as I mentioned before, we work very hard to be able to provide that additional six hundred thousand dollars. That's two cents on our tax rate. We didn't raise our taxes, so that meant that we had to say no to some other things to be able to do that. Closing that gap, and now we're and now the difference between us and that school is one percent. If you do the quick math for a forty five thousand dollars salary that's between, the difference between 10% and 11% is $450 a year, $37.50 per month. Now, I don't want to give a $37.50 per month. That's still a big deal, but I just, I make that point to show we work very hard to close that gap. And we're not finished, and I can't promise that we're going to do more, but the board, particularly that man right there, Mr. Leonard Wiggins, <laughs> he told me, he said, that's good, Eric, y'all did good. But we need to see if we can do more. So we're certainly going to take another look at that uh, come the springtime when we're working on budget again. I try. I always try to be careful about uh, managing folks' expectations. And I don't want to sit here and give the impression that we will increase it beyond 10%. But I will promise you that we'll work on it and do it if we can. So I, I just want to put that in perspective um, to let you know we've worked real hard to close that.
was, well, we have, Dr. Hart, the question is, will we have buses to take the children to school? That is our plan, to have buses to pick up all the children every day uh, when school is in session. Unfortunately, uh, Edgecombe County, probably like Nash and other counties across the state, there is a bus driver uh, shortage. And so if you know anyone who is interested in driving a bus and can get their bus license, please send them our way because we want to ensure that we are able to pick up children every single day. We don't want to be like Wake County and Durham County where hundreds of children are left at school and left at home every day. We want to make sure that we are able to take them up in the morning and bring them back home in the, in the afternoon safely to them. You mentioned transportation and buses. Um, there is a concern that buses will be transferred, the older buses will be transferred from Nash County to Edgecombe. We want to make sure that the students have up-to-date transportation, if that is the case, and not to inherit the old school buses to come over to Edgecombe County. So you take into consideration when the bus transfers take place, that Edgecombe County can not get all of the old buses, but new transportation services as well. Thank you for that. Um, as, a, as a member of the transportation team, I don't know if our director, Ms. Rhonda Wainwright, who works closely with the director of transportation in um, Nash County, Mr. Meyer, and they are working closely There will be an inspection, like they will, our team will look over those buses as they come over. Um, right now, it, with our buses, we are working to figure out the best way in which the buses will work. So, just to not to get too in the weeds, they have multiple passenger buses. Um, Nash County Fleet is mostly uh, a larger passenger bus, and the Edgecombe County Maintenance Garage would not fit that bus inside. And so, right now, we are having conversations public infrastructure, Nash County Public Schools, transportation, I'm figuring out how we can get the best resources for the students who live in Eastern Rocky Mountain, and so that way they don't need the gas and anything, as well as Edgecombe County is able to start the mandate against those buses, so that way they don't break down, and the students can ride them in a consistent manner. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. 
this issue is actually the Oregon and County Court of Plants. We've been talking about what the needs are in reference to adding more people and what some of the needs are for expanding and trying to make sure that we avoid burnout because it's certainly something that's really uh, a lot of our employees had to deal with over the last three or four years with the pandemic and the aftermath. So that's something we're trying to transform the plan. And we're always talking about that as well. But it's a great question and a really important point.
that students, if they have devices now, they will have devices then because Edgecombe County's um, students, all of our students have um, devices that are assigned to them and all of our classrooms are equipped with up-to-date um, technology. say that still a little bit objectively because I've only been here since September 1st <laughs> and I've seen it and I think you would be proud. Yes, we are. I do. Um, 
I would also like to recognize, uh, I know there are several folks in here from, from NASH who have been working on this day to day, and our leadership team at Edgecombe. Could you please give them a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.